You're listening to the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people. Brought to you by i Each episode features someone who sheds a little more light on the ins and outs of delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. And now, here's today's guest. Hey, welcome to episode one of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Our featured guest on episode one is PJ Singh, Chief Digital Officer at ICOR. PJ, welcome. Thank you, Bernie. How are you? Happy to be here. Doing great. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation on the inaugural episode of our podcast. And PJ, I wanted to have you on episode one because, as you know, the name of our podcast is Digitally Irresistible. And, you know, at, at ICOR, we feel strongly that you've got to have an irresistible culture with irresistible people to deliver a great customer experience. And, you know, we're going to get into the irresistible part of our name on episode two. But here on episode one, I wanted you, PJ, to really help us unpack the digital part of the name of our podcast. Specifically, what I'm referring to is the role of digital in the modern customer experience. So let's get into it. But first, actually, before we get into it, just give us a brief introduction to yourself. I'm PJ Singh. I'm the Chief Digital Officer for i uh, I've been with i now almost 15 years. Um, done a lot of different work over here and uh, excited, to, uh, excited to launch your episode one of Digitally Irresistible. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, well, I know you've got a significant organization under your belt, um, under your leadership. And so that's why I wanted to, to have, I wanted to get your perspective. Let's begin with how have you seen just the modern customer experience evolve? Before we even get to digital, how have you seen just the evolution of delivering a great customer experience? The, you know, the customer experience, uh, Bernie, over time has changed a lot. Right? We went from the time, if you go back 15, 20 years ago, and how you used to engage with your brands that you get service from or what those service providers were giving you uh, has completely changed over the last 20 years. And a big thing that has changed is how customers expect their service to be. Um, customers expect their service to be in the channel of their preference. They expect it to be at whatever time they want, whenever they want. They expect to receive the same service, whether they're at your storefront or your website. Uh, giving you a phone call uh, or chatting with you or on your Facebook page. Um, the modern customer experience is all about being present where the customer is uh, and being available where the customer is with answers, with products, with services, uh, and with solutions. And as time has evolved, uh, it has also changed what that customer experience looks like. Most of us, when we call our service providers, don't know who we're talking to. We're in our minds. We're talking to the representation of that brand. Uh, that representative of that brand might be, in most cases, I would say about seventy percent of the times, you're talking to someone that is employed by a company like Ico. Uh, that is a BPO service provider. Uh, we are hiring the agents all across the globe, um, and we're training them specifically to be those brand ambassadors. Um, we're training them with all the knowledge, with all the process, with all the information. And really what we're looking for is, are you good at solving customer problems? Are you good at offering them that amazing experience that all brands expect uh, that their customers receive when they call you or when they talk to you? Um, and providing that same amazing experience, no matter what channel it is, whether it's a phone call or it's a chat or it's an SMS, uh, customers want to be delighted. They want to be wow. Uh, and when they do interact with you, they want to know that I'm talking to someone who really understands them, their concerns, their problems, their information, uh, and also truly understands the brand. What is that brand's position, where, where their processes are, what their policies are, and how can that brand really help their customers? Uh, and, you know, you, you look in the marketplace, uh, companies like Amazon and Starbucks and uh, all these companies that have truly transform the way customer experience today is yep. uh, have become the gold standards for it, right? Apple, uh, when yep. you call these companies, you receive an amazing experience. And that amazing experience 
is now the expectation, no matter what brand I'm interacting yeah. with. Um, you know, yeah. an expectation that I would add to that list is speed, right? We've just, we, we live in the world now where we all want answers to questions now, right? right. And right. I think it's a good segue to really now start really unpacking the role of digital. How have you seen the role of digital evolve in delivering that customer experience? The role of digital is, is significant in delivering that customer experience because today's, again, that customer experience, like you rightly pointed out, is all about that speed. Uh, how I interact with your brand, whether I'm on my phone, whether I'm on my on your website, and typically we're all on the go. We pull up our mobile phone and say, "Hey, I need something." Uh, the expectation is that you quickly understand who I am, what I get from you, what services do I have, what is the status of those services, and you get me an answer. And this is where digital technologies like uh, virtual assistants uh, are truly transforming that customer experience to provide on the go 24 seven support through a robotic uh, process. But that robotic process is well-trained on natural language. Uh, it understands what you mean by just you know, understanding the, the way our, our language flows. And it's using that same natural language to process back to you uh, how that information should be, should be received by the customer and interacting with all of the different systems to understand who you are, what you need, and how can I help. Um, and all the way downstream to digital technologies, when you do talk to a customer, do to an agent or to a to a customer service representative, uh, that person also have a lot of technologies that they have access to. And they also want those technologies to be easy and simple to use. I mean, a nightmare scenario that we, you know, that is very real in a lot of customer service departments today is the knowledge management systems have grown to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 articles of information. Uh, and there is no human being that is going to learn 3,000 articles of information. Right. But you still have to search through all of that to understand how do I help my customer. Uh, but the modern day technologies of today are really looking at customer intent right from upstream, right from understanding why they're calling, what is the information that they need. They're analyzing information using speech analysis, sometimes real time, to understand what is the customer looking for. And then finding those nuggets of information and bringing it forward to our agents and saying, hey, here's the answer that you're really looking for. Help, you know, back to that speed equation, right? I quickly can resolve the problem that you have uh, because I already have all the information right in front of me. So it sounds like some of that technology is not only having a, a great impact on the customer experience, but it's also having a good impact on the employee experience. And what I mean by that, PJ, is the agent who's delivering that customer experience. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. The, the representatives uh, expect that as well, right? They don't want to go through six different systems and seven different knowledge articles in order to resolve a customer query. Uh, we hire people that are passionate about customer experience. They care about your customer. And they can feel that same frustration when somebody is asking them a question and they're going through all these different systems to try and get to that answer versus using technologies like robotic process automation uh, that allows us to stitch all of this information together and present it to the agent very rapidly uh, and allow them to make that decision faster. Um, and that's the, the beauty of digital technologies. How do we have call it this human machine orchestration, that symphony that's on that desktop that is allowing people to get to the answer quickly, get to resolution faster, uh, and, and you know deliver that amazing experience that our brands and our customers expect. Okay. So what are some of the benefits of the evolution of digital to the end customer? You know, we're all end customers, right? When you and I call or contact a brand, what's the advantage to us or to the consumer? I, uh, you know, I think the, the biggest advantage is convenience. How quickly can I get to the answers that I'm looking for? You know, gone are the days when I had to call my service provider because I wanted a new channel on my, on my uh, TV. Uh, today, I do it on my phone. Uh, you know, I don't call my bank to understand what the balance of my account is. I look at my app. Um, and when I need service, uh, you know, I'll use a personal example. If I had to call Home Depot to find out, hey, do you have this piece of uh, device that I'm looking for? I'm not waiting for them and their phone lines and their chat lines. I'm actually sending them an iMessage uh, and they're receiving it and they're responding to me and I'm responding to it throughout the day. I could start a conversation at 8 a.m. and finish that same conversation at 9 p.m. Yeah. Because life happens in the way. And that that's sort right. of asynchronous messaging is really benefiting that convenience yeah. 
we're all looking for as we're on the go. So convenience for the end consumer. What are some of the benefits of the role of digital or digital in the customer experience for the brands that are delivering that experience? Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest being that customer experience, right? That amazing experience that you have with that brand. Uh, but there's also a lot of financial advantages for our clients that are taking on these digital technologies, whether it's uh, reducing the amount of time that it takes to process a transaction uh, or, you know, simplifying their, their websites and their design by, by looking at CX as a design principle uh, or by taking advantage of, you know, an omni-channel environment where agents can be available into a one-on-one interaction with, on a voice channel or a one-to-many interaction in you know, non-voice channels or asynchronous channels. Um, so there's a number of advantages that our clients receive, uh, um, you know, financials and otherwise, but I think the number one being that customer experience, that customer experience truly um, you know, leads to customer loyalty and the ability to cross-sell into that customer other products and other information that you might have uh, that really creates that stickiness that you're looking for. Yeah. With your yeah. No doubt. I mean, I mean, even when you talk to mar- marketers, right? I mean, the the one of the biggest topics among the modern marketer is just delivering a great customer experience for all the points you just made, right? Loyalty, yeah. cross selling. So it's it's that's why this customer experience topic is 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 so huge. It's gone from being an expense years ago to being an asset, and it's a it's a requisite asset. It's something that every brand is focused on in order to just to compete yeah. and, well, and win in the marketplace. Exactly. It's no longer that cost center, uh, that cost of doing business, right? I produced a service, I produced a good, and now I have a cost of doing business where I have to provide a service center. The service center of today is what's going to create that brand loyalty. That's what's bringing that customer back to you again and again to either renew their subscription or buy new products or buy into your other lines of uh, divisions that you might have uh, and really keep rewarding all the work that you're doing with their dollars. Uh, without that customer experience, you know, the customer is not going to come back. They can get, it's very hard to differentiate on product today, right? If you're selling a product, somebody else is selling a product, but it's, it's a lot more beneficial to, to, to uh, compete on experience. And that's what you see with a lot of disruptive technology. New companies come in with new products, but they try to lead with that customer experience, that amazing customer experience that changes the way you interact with that technology or with that service anymore. Uh, and that becomes a new standard. Yeah, yeah. Is there any digital technology that you're really excited about that's maybe still maturing and over the next X number of years, you really think it's going to be a game changer? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think artificial intelligence is definitely a, a big field today uh, that is generating all kinds of excitement, not just excitement for, for technologists sure. like me, but also for our business partners and saying, how can AI truly help me make decisions faster, right? Siphon through millions and millions of rows of data and get to those nuggets of information that I'm looking for. Uh, Or use vision technology to understand that is the workplace that our our representatives have meet the standards for our customers and and ourselves. Uh, Or use speech analysis to understand are there friction points in that customer journey that that I could eliminate by having better design either with service or with policy or with procedures. Um, but AI is definitely a big field, um, lots there today. There's a lot of AI technologies that are available today, but I believe their maturity cycle is still early. There's a lot of individual things that they can solve, uh, but really harnessing the power of data and harnessing the power of AI, uh, is the most exciting part for our iCore. And and I think just the exciting part for the overall business to see how does that evolution, uh, change the customer landscape again. And, you know, uh, who who wins in that in that new customer landscape? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, I agree. Well, PJ, I've got one more question for you, and this one's kind of a fun question. And since this is the first episode, this is a question that I'm going to ask each and every one of our guests at the very end of our conversation. And PJ, that is, I know you work hard, but when you're not working, what do you like to do for fun? Um, I have I have young kids. They're six and uh, five. So sometimes fun is a is a afternoon nap if I can find one. But <laughs> I generally do not find the time for that. Um, but uh, I am a I I like playing sports. I like playing tennis. Um, I am gonna try to start taking some golf lessons. See if I can uh, crack okay. that sport at some point. Uh, but I play a lot of tennis. I play a lot with my kids. 
so that's been a that's been a fun experience. My son is just wrapping up his baseball season. That's been an exciting time. So for me, fun is all about what my kids are doing and then uh, whatever else I can find time to do. But if I can switch in a nap, that's uh, <laughs> That's fantastic. I, I can't say I blame you on any of those. Those are all good things to do for fun. Well, PJ, before I sign off on the first episode here with you, um, I want to ask your permission since the, these are this digital topic is so broad and we're going to be diving deep across the, the, the coming dozens and hundreds of episodes on the Digitally Irresistible podcast. So I want your permission, PJ, to tap into your 400 person organization to bring some of them onto the podcast to dive into some of these topics down the road. Do I have your permission on that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think you will find that the team is extremely excited about this new journey that we're on with our digital office uh, and all the different things that we've been that we've been doing and how do we accelerate that. So uh, definitely have my permission and uh, I'm excited to get uh, most of my team engaged in this process and uh, really, really bring to our viewers all the different uh, value that digital can bring. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to take you up on that. Awesome. Hey. PJ, I want to thank you for being our featured guest on the inaugural episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. Thank you so much, and I'm sure we'll be talking. Thank you for having me. Great talking to you, Bernie. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people, delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. Brought to you by iCore. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss future episodes.